So what I want us to do is to start becoming more conscious, start choosing things in a better way for ourselves, and start creating a life that's going to gear us to really take advantage of the opportunities that are going to show up for us in the, the years to come. This podcast is brought to you by The Integrated Human. We work up, down, inside out to plug yourself into your potential. If you want to see what we are up to and what's next, sign up to our newsletter or follow us on social media. If you like what we are doing, we really appreciate it if you can like our post on social media and YouTube and help us grow. All right. Welcome to the Big and Small Podcast. I'm Jason Shields, and I'm the big one. And I'm Marit Gabrielsen, and I'm the tiny one. That's right. Today, we have an especially juicy, wonderful guest. Yes. We are talking about a person who was able to share with me one of the past life experiences that I had, didn't know me, started explaining exactly what I experienced in a deep meditation. She took me back to when I was a monk, when I was, weirdly enough, dying of um, the Black Death and was able to give me an understanding of what I, was, what I was experiencing and the situation from that time. She's a great healer. She's a light. She's a wonderful person. Susanna Volgold. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the Big and Small Podcast. Thank you. I'm so glad that you have me here. Thank you, guys. I love to see you again. Oh. So face to face, it's only a few weeks that we met first, but uh, I already missed you after a couple of days where I thought, wow, that was such a deep relationship with us and just a connection, you know, and I love it. Thank you for having me here. Oh. Oh, it's pleasure. such a, after we met you, we just like, I, me and Jason went to the side and we're like, and we need gonna, we're going to have her on the podcast. Have to. <laughs> Remember, I'm like, you ask her, you ask her. And she's like, no, you ask. I'm like, no, you ask. Okay, I'll ask. So we ask. Yeah, we ask. I remember, <laughs> I remember, you know, I was, I was making, because we, we met at Engsbaka in, in Sweden at the Ecstatic Festival, where we had, had sessions and, and you had a session. And you came to one of our, our sessions in uh, in in Tremoring, mm -hmm. and I was making the the room ready, and I just had to turn. I'm like, "What is that?" And it was you, because you were just like some light walking past you. Yeah, that's true. It's incredible. You, I just love your whole energy. And Thank you. Thank you, you so much in this podcast. Like you guys, you're shiny too. So. Oh, thank you. Special souls meet these times, you know. Mm. We're we're gathering we're gathering light now. Mm -hmm. It's time for humanity to gather together in light. Yeah. 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 We're so blessed. <laughs> so could you could you tell us a little bit about your process of in a way waking up to mm -hmm. your healing powers and to your mediumship being a medium? How how did that happen for you? Because there's a lot of people out there who who are very much in self development. They're very much in the process of experiencing and and searching inside themselves and outside themselves, and want to get connected to people who have that process going or have worked with that process over many years, like yourself. So how 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 did you discover yourself? Yeah, because you didn't kind of start this when you were five, right? No, not at all. I was raised in a pretty normal family, very rational. My dad was very rational, um, working. My mom was a housewife and, and uh, uh, just taking care of us, us kids. And I was just raised pretty normal, you know. But um, when I was about 30 years old, um, I was already in my in my beautiful profession as a uh, advertising uh, as a copywriter for advertising agencies, and I love this job. But I I have always been extremely curious about all things supernatural, about all mm -hmm. the connections you don't see, you know. 
and but i've never thought that any abilities could be hidden within me too so because i was so rational raised you know uh, there was no words about energy or spirituality or stuff like that and um when i was 30 um my daughter was born and she suffered from rheumatic rheumatic um attacks like uh how do you say in english like uh, juvenile juvenile arthritis juvenile arthritis yes that's a thing okay. that so she had those around 12 years old or how old was she no just after birth after, oh, after wow. when she was a few weeks or a few months old oh. so um it was a pretty tough year for me because my daughter when she was one year old she cried every night mm. and after a couple of weeks first i thought well okay there are those those um babies who cry every night you know but after a few months i thought okay there's there must be something wrong because she was crying every night and um the only thing that brought relief was a medication with ibuprofen or i i, I don't know how, how you say it in english just a medication yeah, you know but i didn't want to stuff my kid with the medicine every night because i i, I knew that's not good for her um and somehow in this one night it just was an um idea that came into my mind and i just uh held my hands over her uh, over her knees which were hurting and i just thought about um just i just imagined light coming out of my hands going into her knees and um changing the the suffering into light and transforming it into light so i just tried this i don't know why i don't know how it was long before i knew anything about energy transfer or anything like that so it just came you know it just happened and um surprisingly it worked out so relative uh, uh, relatively quickly after a few minutes my daughter fell asleep and me too because i was so exhausted at that time and i didn't think much about it but i tried it again and again every night and um i felt the healing power in my hands become stronger and stronger every night so i just placed my hands above her knees or above her ankles uh, and just imagined light coming from the from the source you know running through me into into the uh, hurting body parts of my of my daughter and um it worked and it always worked as long as i could concentrate on that light when i was too tired or too exhausted and i couldn't concentrate it didn't work out yeah. but i just so that was the starting signal you could say for my healing development because after a while i thought well okay if it if it happens if it works out with my daughter maybe it works with other people too and i tried you know i just tried out some when somebody come came to me with like a hurting back i said okay lay down let's try something you know so it just started and it took me a couple of years to figure out that my daughter was crying my own tears um yeah. because you know child and and uh, mom dad and child are always very very close connected to each other yeah so we, we say it's the mothers and fathers and teachers and teachers you know we got and when you have a baby you kind of it's the mix of two two people right so you could say that my daughter brought me into this profession of of becoming a healer because she she just didn't quit crying you know and i i just uh she was a very big challenge for me my little daughter she's like me she's like my mini me you could say same Wonderful. version just just younger and um yeah i figured out it, it, there is this connection of um of there is this connection to my life where she's she's crying so i i just started healing myself my own um patterns my negative belief systems and all that stuff i carried from my parents so i started healing and, and the more i healed the more my daughter healed that was interesting for me yeah because wow. you noticed that when when that was actually my question here mm -hmm. if when you worked with your because we work with a lot of parents at a mm -hmm. events it's a lot of parents mm -hmm. but but you had you noticed that when you were healing that your kid or your child was healing as well right 
although right. it wasn't directly on her it was no i healed myself it didn't yeah. have anything to do with my with my daughter the healing part i i figured out because of her arthritis attacks but i knew that my daughter was so young and when the kid is younger than six years old it it is a connection there is a connection to the parents somehow you know and that's yeah. I already knew that, although I didn't have any training classes in this uh, area, I knew that there's a connection and it has something to do with me. And it was so, um, well, obviously that my life wasn't, wasn't very well, you know, so I had a bad relationship and uh, yeah. So I started healing and I started watching my, my parents, what are their belief systems, what are their um, patterns negative thoughts and so on and um that helped me a lot you know it just came to my mind and then after a while like uh it started 2012 it, it really was another peak you could say there started um that i began to hear voices from other beings and first i thought okay now i'm gonna go crazy <laughs> at all you know yeah <laughs> And I just have to say, I so I love that you say that because I think many people think that either you kind of you're born with it or or that or, you, or that kind of you you are are a channel when when you kind of are are born or that or people that channel they they are they don't they think they're special in any way. But I just love that you say that you thought like oh my god I'm turning crazy now. Yeah, like you know, you know well. what? I don't think I don't think I'm special at all because I know, and my ego hates it when I say that. But I know that everyone can do my job because mm -hmm. I'm just like I'm just a channel, you know. I'm just like um, I'm just channeling the energy, the healing energy. I'm just channeling the channelings, the the uh, messages mm -hmm. from the other world. Yes, but this this. A, a, these abilities are in every one of us it's just you know it's if it's can, if if it can do one human being everyone can do it because it's an ability you 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 just don't get uh, taught how how you can do it but so many people do it anyway but they don't even know you know where where does a thought come from where does it come from? If you are uh, um, a medicine, how do you say, like a doctor who, who cuts uh, brains? Yeah. Brain surgeon. The brain surgeon, they've never saw a thought, right? Exactly. There, there was no one who said, ah, there's a thought and there's a thought. There are no thoughts in your body. So where does a thought come from? And what does it like an, um, do you say impulse? Like, a, like, oh, I got it, an idea. Where does it come from? It comes from the source, right? That's right. So everyone is channeling all all day long. When you paint a, a picture with colors and you are just in this flow, you just forget outside and just are in this now moment. That's like a channeling, you know? If someone yeah. writes a poem, it's a channeling. It's just, you go in the flow, you go deep down. And so I don't do anything somebody else um, couldn't do. It's just... Yeah, it's just it's an ability everyone can can do, and I'm teaching people how yes. to how to do healings or how to how to become a medium. And we'll we'll put your information in a link as well, so that people can uh, take contact with you if that's okay. Yeah, sure, that'd be great. Thank yeah. you. So, so yeah, they were they actually uh, were speaking about that in terms of quantum physics because the cells in our brain have something called microtubules. Mm -hmm. And they are so tiny and they're so structured and they're so aligned that they actually believe that consciousness is a factor of a quantum event. Mm -hmm. There are quantum events happening in our brain constantly. And psychologists have always known that we don't have ideas, ideas have us mm -hmm. because it does come from the source and we download. And the interesting thing is to find the frequency where that information comes in in the right way in the right time, you know, and you're teaching people to find that that radio tuner so that they can find their quantum frequencies. That's mm -hmm. beautiful. 
And you do the same thing, you know, because in the tremoring, you like my experience was, I was twice in a session in Xbaka with you guys uh, and Steve, and um, I felt so much releasing all patterns and releasing all situations where I thought, well, I got this, you know, this is done. This is like a check on it and I don't have to watch it anymore, you know, and some somehow um, this one old situation came up in my mind and I was starting crying and I thought, wow, that's cool because I, I love getting through healing processes. I, I'm not afraid of it anymore. So uh, I thought, well, okay. And that's the same thing you guys do because every time we heal our body, our mind, our emotion system, we raise our frequency a little bit more. So uh, what happens when, when you like raise the frequency, when you, you just brought the, um, uh, or take the example with the radio, you know, when you change the, the signal, suddenly you get other frequencies. You, you can connect to other frequencies if you, if you change. So if you change, if you heal your um, emotional, your, your mental system, and also your body so your frequency raises and suddenly you can connect to other fields of energy to other realities if you mm. say so mm, that's it that's that's so well said Susanna that's really really well said because it's about clearing the channel it's clearing the channel so that higher and higher vibrations can come come to us mm. you know that's that's really the the way we look at it and you know, we have the way we see the world and we have the things that we want and our personalities and our traumas. And if they don't align to allow the frequency, we can't achieve, we can't arrive there. And right. I really agree with you. That's uh, really well said. I think we always are into uh, like, like um, in a special field. We are always connected to this field. But mm. As as soon as long as you you are not healed, as long as you're not um, well, if you're just like stuffed with problems, you know, and old patterns and negative belief systems, you don't ha just have the ability to connect to the higher spheres. But if you if you get rid of all that crap, you know, through healing, um, yeah. suddenly you can connect to it, and suddenly your your world, your re reality gets brighter. Because you, you, um, yeah, you, you, it's like you swing. Do you say swing? It's just like you, you move high in higher, in higher, um, when, when I, uh, when I started working, you know what I, I mean? <laughs> yeah, I told Jason that it went from being seeing the world in black and white, and all of a sudden it had, it had colors. Mm -hmm. And the more, more of the healing we did, the more colors arrived. Mm, beautiful back to white to then having having colors but then you start to see the the graduation gradation between the colors yeah you know when blue goes to purple yeah blue and purple do you see everything that's between there as well the more you heal the more you will see beautiful picture that's it yeah mm. i agree totally. I, had a, I had a question because you you attended two tremoring sessions that we had with seed and Angsbaka. And I'm, I know you had two different experiences, right? Mm -hmm. Can you explain some of that? Because we were having an um, uh, event in Munich, in Germany. It's not where you live, but it's it's uh, in Germany at least. And we, um, we're going to have a, a tremor session there. Mm, with the force. And I was wondering if you could share a little bit that People often think that when you know a technique, it's kind of set in stone. That is the way it's done. But mm -hmm. like you said, you had, uh, told me in Angst you had two different like, experiences, right? Absolutely. The first one I just attended because I, I, I've seen you guys, you know, and uh, my friend says, oh, let's go there. And I thought, oh, why not? Yeah, just uh, I love experiences, some, something new. So I just came there and I didn't even know what tremoring was, you know. I had no idea. Don't be, don't be mad at me, but no, no. Well, you shouldn't. <laughs> you didn't know anything. It's perfect. We are, we are teaching it. So yeah, it's yeah. very good that you so, didn't know anything. No one, no one had done tremoring there before. So yeah. we did. Yeah, we did. yeah. So um, I just lay down, and you, uh, Steve, and and you, uh, Mark, you um, 
she explained it so well, you know, it was so easy. I just thought, okay, so I'm going to lift my butt up, you know, and just let's see what happens. And it really, it started right away after a few seconds, you know, it's like, it's like almost as if the whole group were in an energy where it gets like an initiation, you know, like, okay, my body already knew before I knew, you know, mm -hmm. so it just, I started tremoring and um, like trembling and uh, first I didn't think much of it. It was just, okay, it, it happened. So maybe probably it will um, relieve or re release some, some, um, some tension. crampy old uh, tension, right? You know, um, but then it it's like I forgot time and space. You know, I was just in this tremoring, and it, although it felt good, it 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 was it was like yeah, cool. It's it's like a stadium where you don't think, you just you're just gone from your mind. I don't know if it's normal or if everyone says that, but um it's like i couldn't remember how long we we had the session i had no idea it's just it happened and somehow some some part of me thought it's very good that i'm tremoring it's very mm. good so just keep going keep going and and suddenly my my shoulders sometimes went with it and my hands um and there come i i didn't even remember i don't even re remember what kind of situation came up i just remember that there was it's, it was a very old situation and where i suffered where i had like still those um trauma bonds if you if you say so in inside of my body and because it came up and i just i felt it again and i i saw it with my own eyes and i started uh, crying i thought well that's cool I mean, it's not cool. It was, it was yeah, sad. It's cool. It's cool. Yeah. Well, to, to meet it and release, it's cool, right? Yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. It, it's uh, when my experience, at least when, when I, that happens during a trauma session, it just, the body is releasing. It's not like you don't, exp it just releases in a very, yeah, not, you way. don't feel the same pain. Mm -hmm. you, you're just like an observer, you know, I just That's observed exactly. my, in the state of I, I felt my body tremoring and my mind was showing me all those pictures and I I was like oh okay and I started crying but it was it was no pain inside of me it was just like I, I, I'm observing I'm, I'm watching the old pain but I had no emotional um, connection to it it was, it was more like my body's just yeah, you need to cry those tears so it's it can go it can it can move you know mm. um it was interesting it was just so special and and different to all other things i i've done so far and the second time i just of course i kind of thought well it's gonna be like that last time before and it was totally different it was totally different my, my also my, my body was tremoring but there was no special situation. It was more that I was also, again, the observer of myself, of my body, mind, soul system, but it was softer and it was more like the last rests of it can go out now, you know, the last, it's good because it's here a little bit and here a little bit and I can't, I, I don't know how to explain it uh, in, in other words, but because you're so into it, it's just, yeah, it just happens. Yes, mm. it's very interesting. Uh, did you feel at any time that the language was a difficulty? Not at all. Not yeah. at all. Excellent. Not at all. Because see, for, uh, you, you, Marit, were um, uh, talking so precisely and so, um, so to say, E in easy words so that everyone uh, no matter where he he was coming from because we were very international in Angspaka, right mm -hmm. um everyone understood and i understood it too very good mm -hmm. that was no no problem at all okay. that's wonderful thank you but yeah. uh, i have a, a bit of a, a question for you around what you notice on your courses 
um, because you you are mainly focused these days on teaching people healing techniques because the world needs a lot of light now mm -hmm. because of the power that's coming with technology and people waking up and needing to wake up. Yeah. Um, what do you feel is the most common block that you meet when you're teaching people the healing techniques that you are? It, that, is there something that you can see as a general trend in people that as people you're teaching? Suffering from? Yeah, that they yeah. suffer from or that they have a blockage with. Is there something that uh, you've noticed as a trend? Yes, it's victimhood and uh, the lack of self-love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Victimhood means that um, he, people think they are victims of the system, of someone who did something to them, of the parents. And, and my work is to bring the people into their own power so that they um, take all the responsibilities back to them. Because every time you say, um, he is guilty uh, that I feel bad, every time you say so or you think so, you give the power away. You know, that's mm. the only moment where you um, bring yourself into this victimhood because there is, um, you know, there's this one saying, I, I maybe I told you uh, already, I think it was Rumi or Buddha, I, I can't remember, um, that says uh, suffering, no, let me, let me think of, um, pain is inevitable. But suffering is your free choice. If it's optional, yes. It's optional, yeah. Yes, exactly. That's so well yeah. said. So there is no possibility that you are not, that you will not um, um, feel pain. It's, it's just when you are here in this human body, you will feel pain. Emotional yeah. pain, mental pain, bodily, physical pain. Hmm. But you decide how long you suffer from it. Yes. You know, you decide. And sometimes we are here, you know, like thousands of years, we just did this game with the um, uh, victimhood and um, suppression and stuff. And now it's now it's our time to get rid of it all. Yes. But everyone has to to start on their own so we have to we have to think okay where am i still in this victim role you know in this victim thinking and mm. a lot of our parents are a lot of our parents say that well just only because of my neighbor i'm sick now or only mm. because of my bad boss or only because no because you have the choice you can you can act Otherwise, if you want to, you, you always have free choice. It's it's not easy, I know, but the moment where you give your power away, you do yourself this. You give yourself the energy as a victim, and we yeah. need to stop that. Yes, that's so cool and so beautiful. We we think the same way. You know, we talk often about uh, what freedom is. If you want to be free and people think that that means being free from the consequences of their actions that i can do what i want nothing will ever happen to me i'm fine i can drive without my hands on the steering wheel nothing's going to happen to me that's their idea of freedom mm -hmm. but real freedom is conscious choice yeah. you make a choice for yourself you have the power to make the choice mm -hmm. and when you're choosing it whatever good and bad and painful or pleasure that comes from it it's a chosen thing. You did that and you can absorb and take the authority from that and continue to move forward in your life. Mm -hmm. you know? But with the victimhood you talk about and that we talk about, yeah. you don't have a choice because you, you get you you don't have the power because your neighbor, your boss, your parents, your children, the system, I don't know what to call it, uncle. Was it what you call the government in the United States? Oh, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam has, they have the power. So you feel powerless. But like I say, if you manage to take that power back, then then you move away from that victimhood and you could own your, cho your uh, decisions much more. Exactly. And, you know, when I met you, uh, Susanna, I, I noticed immediately that you 
are in the continuum. You are in the field of energy and light, uh, like Marit and myself. You know, we live in this process of unfolding and, and beauty in the, in the world, in the universe. And it's so interesting and so good being with a person that has become a presence, not just a personality. Mm. You know, and and when you sit with people who, like you're saying, are stuck in an event, in one event, they're not in the process of the universal unfolding. They're stuck in that time that that happened or the, the thing that I should have, but I didn't or whatever. When you are with them, you create the field where they can suddenly drop that and move into that flow. Mm. And it's so it's so cool. You know, it was really, really evident to me that that's the, the effect that you have on people. Mm, so do you. Oh. And I think it's really important that we don't take things personal anymore. Mm. You know, everything, because of course you we can judge of course we have to judge as long as we are in this body we have to decide things you know we have to decide okay i'm gonna go to this course but not to this so we have to decide I, i'm gonna eat this or i'm gonna cook this or i don't like those shoes i like these shoes more but um as soon as i take something personal and i have a energetic um energetic how do you say uh, in english it it does something an energetic emotion in me if someone says something and i say no i don't like that there's no energy you know it's just a, a decision i don't like it but if i say oh, i don't like it why did you um, say it? trigger yeah trigger get triggered trigger. right thank you yeah. we will live in that's why you have to have trigger warnings on everything yeah right. you get triggered having that oh Oh, response. Yeah. So as, as soon as there's a trigger, you know, an emotion coming up inside of me, it has something to do with me because the feeling is inside of me and not inside of the other one. Exactly. So, and, and, and of course, I have a lot of triggers still. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm I'm laughing about me, you know. Because I think, okay, I'm now I'm I'm so long on my way and uh, already, but there's always it, it doesn't end, you know, it never stops. So I can I always get those triggers. Maybe you too. I don't know. Yes. Oh, yes. Every day, yes. but yeah, <laughs> when, we, when, we have, when we have our events, I say, I say one of the first things I say is that you're gonna get triggered. And it's just interesting because then within 10 seconds, people are sitting like this. Yeah. <laughs> like, well, you are, already are. Your whole body is triggering it, are triggered right now. And it's just very interesting because in the beginning, at least I felt that the triggering, it was it was so personal, like you say. If I got triggered, it was a personal attack. Mm -hmm. But after working a lot, you know, you, you kind of, the triggers becomes a cue that here there is more to look at. Yeah. Because you have healed many places, so you become very safe in a way. Mm -hmm. you, you have evolved enough, you're good enough, you, you manage better. But then the triggers becomes a, a, a guiding way for kind of there, there's more this direction. So yeah. then it becomes a, a treasure chest, you know. The triggers becomes a sign to continue that way, to heal that part. Mm -hmm. So I think the day you get triggered free, mm -hmm. then you're gonna have an issue. Yeah, then you have an issue. <laughs> you know. But that that was uh, actually a part of a conversation that I wanted to have with you, um, um, because it, if I may break this into two pieces, uh, because we we have a thing I I tell Maudit, and in the beginning of her process. She would always get a little angry when I said it. A little. A little bit angry. A lot. I'm yeah. triggered. Yes. She's like, <laughs> triggered. I go like like nuke. You couldn't yeah. imagine you get triggered. <laughs> no. <laughs> There's a lot of energy over there. And I would just laugh sometimes and I said, Life is absurd. And she's like, I hate it when you say that because I don't know what you mean by that. What do you mean it's absurd? You know? 
And it's absurd because we know that we are a quantum field of energy that's expressing itself through a body, mm -hmm. having a mechanical relationship with the world where we assign the meanings to everything. Mm -hmm. Nothing in itself has any meaning other than what we put on it. Yeah. But at the same time, we do ridiculous stuff. We're addicted to strange things. And we say absurd things, you know? It's like it's it's like so awkward at the how same can, time as it's so grand. How can you right? call any of what I do absurd? Trigger, 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 yeah. trigger. I was, I was actually talking about my my absurdity, not hers, right? Sure. But, now but, I know ex I know exactly what you mean. And I think that's because we are in many dimensions to the same time. Yeah. You know, as the more you hear, the more your conscious uh, arises consciousness rises the more you rise up to like higher dimensions so you are into it and you know you are a multi-dimensional being having a physical experience as a human being you know as a, in a human body and you still like you know this also your mind knows this also you know okay there is a trigger maybe you don't like um uh get too mad anymore but there's still uh, emotion coming up you know oh, i hate him Ugh. you know <laughs> i want to kill him you know um and still you know you are this multi-dimensional thing it's so funny because it's all at once it's, it's all, all together exactly and that's and you, you, yeah yeah. Yes, it is. Exactly. Yes, it is absurd. It's absurd. It's absurd. It's absurd. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But I, I think um, the more you you get aware of this, the more you get aware of yourself, of your being, the less you take yourself serious. You know, right. because I, sometimes I say, "Oh I, my God, la last night I drank wine. I don't want to drink wine anymore. It's not good for me." You know, and then on the next evening, somebody asks. Susanna, do you want a glass of wine? I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm, 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 the other day, I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Like, it's it. it's not I said, I, you know, I, I talked to my husband. I went, you know, I don't want to have wine in a while. You know, this just doesn't feel, I don't want wine. And then we went to, it was actually not a weekend, it was a Wednesday. The Wednesday. We went because you had, we, Jason had his uh, birthday on Wednesday. Birthday. Yes. Yes. So we went down to have a nice dinner, nice steak. And I was like, I have a glass of wine with that. And I was drinking it. I was just like, oh my God. Like I was watching it. Like my, my, my larger self went like, what are you doing? Yeah. And, and the <laughs> tiny Margaret just went, I'm just enjoying a glass of water. Yeah, may I have more, please? <laughs> yeah, 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 one more. <laughs> it's so funny, isn't it? Yeah. It is. Like, um, like, yeah the the ego has still a little bit of control over ourselves you know exactly. but i think it's it's so what what you really get better at is that you don't take what's it was in norwegian it's gonna it's gonna be uh what's that in english um, or german i don't i don't know yeah. it's in german either take yourself so, that like, seriously it is gonna be that right yeah like you don't you just don't you if if you fail fail and you you said you were not gonna have wine but then you have a glass it's like okay then we go yeah. like you recover so much quickly instead of just going on a on a real bad like self hate rant where you you can't you are a piece of shit and you can't do anything and you can't hold any promises and it's just more like what are you doing well okay I start again now I start again now yeah. because your recovery becomes so much quicker yeah and and realize that as human beings, we're total, which means we have our ridiculous things as well. You know, so we, we have our funny things. We're we're insane Rottweilers on one side and we're, we're angels on the other side. It's kind of like, <laughs> I'm, 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 I've stopped eating cookies and then I still have a cookie in my hand. That has happened. Yes. Like I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm stopping eating cookies and I'm when I'm eating one, it has happened. Yeah. And then you just go, wow, that's, that's absurd. It's absurd. Yeah. You just, yeah, it's absurd. Yeah. Wow. You just, you know, you just have to be, when, when you are aware that you are, when you're observing your own doings, your own habits, then maybe you can, you can treat yourself like a little child, you know, just mm -hmm. don't take yourself that serious. Yeah.
Exactly. I love that. But but you mentioned there was the victim, victim, and, and victimness, lack of self love, lack of self love. How how did that express itself? Do you see? Well, the lack of self love is all uh, almost every. Uh, um, it's all, all, almost always the solution, the following of some traumatic um, experiences in the past. If and it can be something little, you know, you don't don't uh, compare yourself to others because sometimes when you're dead, when you were like four years old and your dad said, you look ugly. Maybe he didn't even mean it, you know, just me meant because you had this green shirt or what you what you wear when you were. Well, but, or you said in a fun, like just for a fun. Oh, you look yeah, ugly. Maybe, but this can also be tra traumatic for you and it can like um it's like an imprint in your in your system you know in your consciousness in your in your um physical body it can well you know that you guys you you work with it too so um it's like it goes down to the cell consciousness so i'm ugly and you do everything since then you do everything to be pretty but you do it, you do it, but you don't feel it. You know, you do it on the outside. You try to convince everyone, every every um, man you meet afterwards. You convince him that you are the prettiest, but mm. deep inside you feel this lack. So that's where we um, where I um, work with the clients to to um, release those uh, negative belief systems. Sometimes we find the um, the beginning sometimes not it doesn't matter because we can release it anyway so um yeah just to to get rid of it and to to get a new program i'm pretty no matter if i tr wear makeup or not no matter what i'm i'm wearing mm -hmm. how i get my hair done or not you know but that's the it's, it's so true and, and like you said when when we were in Sparka. I didn't notice your shiny hair or 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 makeup or anything or your nice clothes because oh you, you did were... not <laughs> no I did not I yeah. did that later but it was it was the fact that it was just something very was like a light bulb you see your lights just passing by you yes. know because it's from the inside out so if you have the love on the inside it will shine through on the outside and you have the light on the inside it shines on the outside as well. You know, and I think everybody becomes more shiny when they're with you because you're shining that and it's reflecting on them, you know, That's so beautiful. it's so beautiful. Mm. You know, how how often do you see that people have, uh, you know, we were talking about how on one side we're absurd, crazy Rottweilers and we're also angel baby beings, you mm. know. Um, mm. I noticed there's a lot of self lack of self-love and self-criticism and hate because people have an a strange and unrealistic idea of what perfect is mm -hmm. that they want to be perfect but i always ask them according to who and they judge everything that they do and feel and are based on some strange mm -hmm. picture of what some perfect behavior or perfect result would be and because they never achieve this perfection, you know, that they have in their heads or that they've been taught they must have, that they somehow can never accept themselves. Do you, do you also see these things? Mm -hmm. Also, uh, they suppress others and make them smaller to make themselves bigger. You know, exactly. it's also a very common thing. Oh, look at her. Oh, my God, she's fat. You know, something mm -hmm. like that. So. Yeah. The only thing that is behind this is that make her look bad. So I'm a little bit more pretty, you know, or beautiful. Exactly. So um, I have a wonderful example. I have, I have I've had a situation um, very long years ago when my uh, second child was born. So it's 16 years ago by now. I was in Italy with my kids. And it was like six months after after the birth, after I have given birth. So I had still a little, little belly and still big hips, you know. Mm. But I, I wasn't 
I wasn't fat or anything. I just had the same uh, body like like I have now. But just you you, yeah, you saw I was just I was just pregnant, you know. And I was sitting there on the beach with my son on my lap, and I was so I'd say typical German, you know. I had no makeup. I had no earrings. I had no jewelry. the The hair was up, very practical. You know, Germans are sometimes like very practical. Yeah, just like one what? of the reason why I love them. Yeah, we love that. We they love are really okay. Fine. Yes. They are okay. like sis, we and love practical. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Love it. So <laughs> I was on the beach and um, I was a little bit ashamed because my bikini I wore was too too small for me. You know, because I didn't think of buying a new bikini when going to the beach. But no. Anyway, I was sitting there and I thought about, well, I need to do some more sports. I, I'm so fat and everything is so soft, you know. OK, right in front of me, there were three Italian women and they mm. were really big. OK, I'm, I'm talking about big, so big. Yeah. Mm. But they had very small bikinis they had earrings they were makeup they were doing their uh, had done their hair they were really pretty like when when we go out at night they were on the beach yes but it was interesting because they didn't they they weren't ashamed or anything they were much bigger than me you know and very soft they weren't ashamed. They were just sitting there and having fun. Mm. And I was like, wow. I mean, first I, I was judging, you know, how can they wear those bikinis? I mean, oh, come on, it's not okay. You know, they're, they're just too big for it. So, but the more I, I watched them, the more I got smaller and smaller, you know, in my, in my mind, because I thought, well, they are having fun. I don't. They are on the beach having fun. And th the interesting thing was they were walking to the to the sea and going jumping into the ocean. They had so much fun. And men were walking uh, by and they were whistling and saying, Hey Bella, woo, yeah. you know, <laughs> beautiful. And I was like, hey, come on, really? And that was so interesting for me and it was so remarkable and i just i got it you know i just got it it made like a like a switch in my brain that when you want to be beautiful when you want to be shiny and when you want to enjoy your life it's something from the inside it does not have anything to do with your body sizes with your with your how you look like it's just it has nothing to do with it. It's an inner, an inner thing, an inner energy. Because they were shiny, those three ladies. They were really shiny. And every woman, every man who walked by were like, oh, they're having fun. And they were like sparkling, you know? Um. And it was so beautiful to watch them and to watch myself going through those um those judging processes hint uh, 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 up to up to this like almost humble you know i was almost humble like where that i thought well thank you for for becoming uh for getting this situation to watch yeah yeah that's so cool and it's such a clear picture i can and see these three, three yeah. italian ladies having so much fun having fun yeah <laughs> It had so much fun, and I was sitting there. Uh, I hope nobody sees me because my hips are so big, and hmm, you know. And, uh, I, I mean, come on! It's just time is time is running. You know, you need to enjoy every moment. Absolutely. So that's what I teach my clients. You know, it has nothing to do with your size. It had not has nothing to do how you look in the mirror, how your hair is, how your. It has nothing to do with it. You need to get the connection to yourself of mm. course you are inside of this body you are like um managing driving this body you can say so as a soul mm. and it needs to be healthy of course and yeah. you should you should should um care for it 
compare it to a vehicle. Yeah, it's like a vehicle, right? Yeah. So you need to. You should give it oil and and check the brakes sometimes yeah. and stuff like that. <laughs> like you need to take care of the body. Yeah. But it's not a size thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you still, you should have fun in this life, you know, you should jump into the sea, you should just wear this small bikini, who cares? Just yes, do exactly. it. <laughs> Maybe not me. Maybe not Jason. Maybe not Jason. Mm, okay, <laughs> let me think of it. I'm <laughs> having something Let's together, like having an event together, the four of us would see it. Maybe we should do one in Italy and then Jason can have a bikini on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We'll, we'll find one, Marit, for him. We'll <laughs> find one. Germany has everything. I'm sure about it. Yo. It was <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you, you made this beautiful quote before um, the difference between suffering and pain. Mm -hmm. Pain you will have, the suffering is optional. Mm -hmm. And in the same way, judgment and evaluation mm -hmm. evaluation is is it useful or not useful mm -hmm. but the judgment is is it good or bad is it is it is it is it loving or hateful is it you know it's charged and mm -hmm. i really like that the way you're you were talking about that because it's the we can drop judgment and suffering but you still need to evaluate in your life what is functional for you and not functional, but how we fill those things, how we relate to them is up to us. Like you were saying, it's the feeling on the inside. It's the, the thing in itself doesn't hold feeling. It's our feeling that we're putting on. It's our meaning that we put on it. And I thought that was this, these beautiful Italian ladies that you were talking about, you know, and having so much fun. <laughs> I want to go back in time, hang out with you. We go out and play in the water with those ladies. We show them what fun is. That's fun. I like yeah, that. Yeah. Cool. You were talking about the charge right now. You know, it's it's so easy to say to just let go of the suffering. It's not easy. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Not no, always. No. Sometimes it is, but not always. Because yeah. I have clients, you probably as well, who um, are suffering like 20, 30, 40 years about some some happenings in the past so it's not that easy to get the client to to um recognize okay i just i just let's just get away of it let's just get rid of it you know because they don't know how exactly. they say well i cannot forgive and sometimes i just explain that forgiveness is so important just not it does not mean that the other one wasn't guilty it just means that you release all the connection to that situation so that you you yourself get um, freed from it. Mm -hmm. That you just put all the heavy stuff down and just leave it there and go go straight on without all that heavy packages. And it feels so good, but... Mm? But it's so difficult, you know, because say that you've been carrying it for 30, 40 years, Oh yeah, some, you know, some. it's also because then what will life be without it? Because the idea, yeah. you know, it's it's a good thing, but that's scary, you know, because you you know you you have you have it has found a spot for it. Yeah, yes, you've, you've you've in a way found a way to live with being a victim. You know victimhood, so you know, it's hard to let go. Yeah, because you know it is so, and and the heart yeah. is like, although it's a good, we say that you know that yeah. change, good or bad, is scary. We don't like change. Humans mm -hmm. don't like change. So, mm -hmm. so yes, the head can understand that. Yeah, you should get rid of this, but the heart can be terrified mm -hmm. because it's been in that state for 30, 40 years. And what if it's allowed to be happy? What what if, what if you can experience? joy mm. that's yeah. scary yeah yeah it's sometimes like old people they have um uh, illnesses or diseases and they they keep it you know because it brings them compassion the yes. kids come around and and do the grocery shopping and all yeah. that stuff they didn't have before so why should they want to get rid of the disease you know yeah and Sometimes you have to just tell them what's the um, what's the advantage of this disease. 
Yes. Exactly. First, they say, well, there's no advantage. Are you crazy? Yes, there is. Because mm -hmm. your daughter calls you twice a day. Your son comes and asks you, how are you, mom? You know, all that stuff. And if they, when they um, get aware of it, it's easier for them to, to get rid of it. But mm -hmm. exactly. also, I always um, ask my clients um, when they suffer from some stuff in the past, you know, um, don't ask yourself, why did this happen to me? Ask yourself, what should I learn from it? Because all the things you, you experience in life, the negative things, show you something. They want to show you. They want to um, get you, make you aware of something you want, you, sh you should develop. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yes. Okay. Um, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's very, very cool. Um, I, I did a deep meditation around why these things stick with us. Mm -hmm. um, and in physics, I, I, if you've studied some physics, you know that when electricity, which is energy, when it moves in a direction, it creates a magnetic field. Mm -hmm. So you can measure the magnetic field mm -hmm. in all of your electrical appliances and all your electrical wires. Mm -hmm. And emotion is energy in motion. Mm -hmm. So when you were, like you were saying, why did this happen to me? All that energy is directed from that thing to me and it becomes magnetic. Mm -hmm. I get stuck magnetically to that event mm -hmm. until I take the charge of it out. Mm -hmm. And then we have to go to a, an emotional state somehow or to an intellectual or spiritual state where the polarization, you know, electricity moves between positive and negative. Mm -hmm. I was good. He was bad. Mm -hmm. He dominated. I was a victim. Mm -hmm. These are these are polar opposites, and and when we're able to resolve that polar opposites, the energy stops flowing and it becomes love. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we can either become love and take that to the event, or we need to transform the event into love and bring it back mm -hmm. so that we can release that energy. Mm -hmm. So it's a very interesting mechanic with this the the emotional charges. Um, thank you. Thank you. What, what processes do you recommend to people when they're working on the polarizations of their emotions? What or finding love? Um, I, I prefer that I find the, the patterns which, um, come again and again. There are yep. patterns in our lives and the patterns are not from the outside situation. The patterns is, uh, the patterns is um, repeat, our repeating feeling we have, the repeating negative feeling we have, okay? That's important to find that. And then, because when I, when I felt I'm a victim, when I was four years old, it, could be that I was a victim afterwards, that I felt the same feeling afterwards when I was mm -hmm. 10 and when I was 15 and, and so on. So my repeating pattern then would be, I feel like a victim. Mm -hmm. So it's important then to, you can take an, an, uh, a situation from, from the now time, you know, from, from it, it does not have to be in childhood. It can, can be, um, an actual situation you, you, where you were feeling this feeling, um, you can take it and just erase the other person. Mm -hmm. Don't say it was, for example, it was Jason who did me wrong. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, this mean Jason, he's so mean. Just, no, it does not, there's, there's nothing about the other person. So erase it, just, just get rid of it. It goes only, it's only about your own feelings. What are mm -hmm. you feeling? I feel like a victim. 
Okay, so you then you can work with it. And then you see, okay, there were many Jasons in the past who pushed the same button, you know, who, who pushed the same, who, who triggered the same feeling inside of my body. Yeah. So it's not about Jason. It's not about the other one. It's all mm -hmm. about me. And uh, the universe will repeat situations again and again and again as long as you uh, just get it. As long as you solve the, the problem you, you need to solve. As long as you heal. As long as you um, figure out what's your process in that. Because everything has a higher sense. There is no, there are no um, coincidences. That's so if you, it's like, it's like, you know, when a client comes to me, a, a woman and says, you know what, Suzanne, I have one man after the other, one husband after the, after the other, and they always cheated on me, for example. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they will go cheat on you the next time as well. Because mm. if you don't solve the thing you, you are supposed to learn, it mm. will not change on the outside. And it's very, it's very difficult to own the fact that either I pick men that cheat or I turn men into cheaters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know which one is the right thing, but it, it's just, it's just, it's not about the other. I mean, that does not mean that it's okay what he did. No, 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 it's not. You know, that it's does a, not mean it's a, it's a pattern that you have in yourself. Yeah, it's every, a pattern that you attract, you attract the situation. If you have like belief in your in your cell consciousness, if you have um old belief um energies that mm -hmm. you are not worth it to, to get love, for example. You're mm -hmm. not worth it to be the one and only or whatever your your own sentences, your mm -hmm. own phrases. Um, then you will attract people, no matter if it's it's men yes. or women or uh, friends or family members or colleagues, uh, co-workers. It does not, it doesn't matter. It's just somebody will come and push that button. Exactly. As, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so they're basically just triggers waiting to happen in a way. And yeah, that's... Because we are here to to do our experiences to to develop, you know, maybe you have this life, you have had this life again and again and again. And now it's your master life, you know, you, now you're you're so close. I always tell, tell my clients, clients, you're probably that close, you know, you need to get going now. Don't don't give up. Exactly. That's, that's beautiful. We even triggered the house. <laughs> that was the alarm starting. Oh, then, okay. We triggered the ghost in this house. Yeah, now. the ghost yeah. in the house turned the, the alarm. The alarm, the, went the alarm went off. That's weird. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't hear it. Oh no, it was super loud. So <laughs> we triggered the ghost. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Wow. Thank you. Yes. It's been so wonderful to meet you again. Same and here. Thank you. It's been many weeks since we saw each other, but yes. we hope we're going to see you soon in Germany. Susanna, yeah. we love you. We, we think do. you are amazing. And thank you so, so much for the work that you're doing oh, for you people, so the teaching that you're giving, and the person that you are. We really, really appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate your work too. And I hope you go on and get more international. Come very often to Germany. Uh, I'm really looking forward to meet you guys on the 26th of October, right? 26th of October yes. in München. In uh, München, yes. right. In Munich. Munich. So, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you so much. So remember, you matter unless you multiply yourself by the speed of light squared, then your energy, but if you can't be energy, matter. Thank you for listening to our podcast. We hope you felt we added something to your day and hopefully your life. If you want to learn more, subscribe to our newsletter and find us at integrated-human.com. That is integrated-human.com. Integrated Human on YouTube and other social media platforms. 
Have a great day and thank you again for listening. Love, light and upgrade from us at the Integrated Human Team.